Welcome to another Getting Started video for Octopus Deploy. This video will help you learn more about life cycles. Today we're going to cover life cycle creation, life cycle phases, and how they're used by your deployment process. Life cycles give you control over the way releases of your software are promoted between your environments. So let's get started. Life cycles can be found by navigating to the library page and then clicking Life Cycles. This page is where we define and manage the life cycles for this space. We can see that we currently have a single life cycle, the default life cycle. The default life cycle is automatically created by Octopus and will contain a phase for each environment you have. You can see that for this instance, we have four phases based on the four environments we defined, development, test, user acceptance testing, and production. A phase is a step in your life cycle that will contain one or more environments. Think of a phase as a stage in your product life cycle that your application is deployed to. Let's take a closer look at how this all fits together. We're going to add a new life cycle to our instance by clicking on Add Life Cycle in the upper right corner. We'll be using this life cycle for our deployment processes that won't need to go through a user acceptance testing and can be deployed directly to production after they have gone through test. We'll start by giving this life cycle a name and description. Now let's add our phases. We'll click on Add Phase to add a new phase to our life cycle. This application will get deployed to our development environment first. So we'll type our name and then click Add Environment. Next, we'll select our development environment since that's where we want our deployment to happen in this phase. Once our application has been successfully deployed to development, we'll want it to go to our test environment so that the QA team can sign off on it. Let's click Add Phase again, name the phase, and select Test as the environment we add. Lastly, we want our application to deploy to production once it has passed its testing. We'll add one more phase to this life cycle, give it a descriptive name, and add our production environment. Down on the bottom of the page, we can see our life cycle preview with the different stages and environments. Let's save our life cycle and head back to the life cycles page. We have our newly created life cycle, which does not contain a phase for our UAT environment, along with our pre-existing default life cycle. Now let's take a look at how life cycles fit into our deployment process. We'll start on the deployment process page for our project. On the right hand side, we can see the life cycle that this project follows, the default life cycle. We'll quickly hop to the project overview page and see we have our four phases listed in order. Let's update this project to use our newly created non-UAT life cycle. We'll head back to the deployment process page and click Change on the Life Cycle section. Let's select our new life cycle and then click Save. We can see that the life cycle for this project has been updated. As a result, when we head back to the Project Overview page, we're seeing an updated environment list. Now, once this project has been deployed to development and test, it can go directly to production. Now it's your turn to create your first life cycle. Here are some recommendations to keep in mind as you do that in your own instance. Use existing environments. Life cycles are created from environments, and those can be shared across many phases in life cycles. Don't create a new environment just because you're creating a new life cycle. And lastly, reuse life cycles when appropriate. Life cycles can be used for many projects. You don't need to create a new one for each deployment process. Well, that's the basics of life cycles and Octopus Deploy. Be sure to check out our other Getting Started videos, and thanks for watching. Happy deployments!